Welcome to the Accustats Arena at Caesars Southern Indiana for the 2022 Derby City Classic and the All-Around Pocket Billiards Championship. Thank you. Pool's most exciting event is proudly sponsored by Diamond Billiard Products, by Simonis Cloth and Aramith Pool Balls. We'd also like to recognize our three uh, associate sponsors, and that is OBQs, Outsville, and Master Chalk. And we want to say how much we appreciate the great work of our tournament direction team from Bad Boys Billiards Productions. It's our 12th year here at the Caesar Southern Indiana. They've been great hosts and partners along the way, and we thank them for their hospitality. And lastly, we want to thank our great DCC extended family here and around the world for so graciously supporting the event and making it the most popular and prestigious event on the Pro Pool calendar. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, we're in the one pocket division. We're in round number five. Uh, just before I get to player introductions, we've got some congratulations to make, and those go out to Fetter Gorst, who last night became the 2022 DCC Bank Pool Champion, his first DCC title. His banner will now hang in the rafters here for perpetuity. Congratulations to Fetter. <laughs> 457 players began the one pocket division. There are 69 players left going into this round. This is round number five. Let's get right underway with player introductions. From Houston, he's a former Derby City Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge champion. He's also the 2021 International Open One Pocket Champion. He's sponsored by Predator, by Havoc Productions and Bogies Billiards. Please welcome Superman, it's Roberto Gomez. His opponents from Angeles City and the Republic of the Philippines. This man has 13 banners hanging high here at Caesar Southern Indiana, representing 13 Derby City titles, two nine ball, five master of the table, and six one pocket titles, a feat that may never ever be equaled. He's a member of the One Pocket Hall of Fame. He's a member of the BCA Hall of Fame, and if there were any more halls of fame for being one of the greatest of all time, he would be on the top of that list as well. Sponsored by San Miguel Beer and Puyat Sports, ladies and gentlemen, the most famous name in the game, the magician, Efren Reyes. Okay, gentlemen, go ahead and lad for the break if you would. It's a race to three, 60 second clock, alternate break, rack your own, cue ball fouls only. We're gonna send it up to the com box to Mark Wilson and Double J, Jeremy Jones. Today's feature matchup has the winningest derby one pocket player ever, Efren Reyes, competing against his countryman and the current International Open one pocket champion, Roberto Gomez. I learned a lot from my co-host and expert analyst, Jeremy Jones, and I know you will too. This is Mark Wilson, and Jeremy, what, would you, what should we look for here? Well, it should be a very entertaining match. You and I have had Roberto on the one pocket here of late in that what, you know what he did at the International just you know, a couple months ago, kind of stole that title from Tony Shohan after Tony playing so well. Efren would, like Kenny said, so many banners in the rafters. And I don't think he wouldn't be trying to get another one here in 2022. Yeah. I mean, he can, you know, he's an underdog in all of them now, but I think this one more than any of them, he can get going. And I think the more he plays on this slick table, I think the better chance he's got. Uh, he's won the lag, which that's a, certainly a big step in the direction of winning this match. And he's made a nice opening break. The five ball went right over by his pocket. If you pocket a ball on the break, you re-rack. Yeah. Start over. So. And that's if you pocket it with a scratch or not. Just any time you pocket it, you can't get rewarded or penalized. And there's a uh, good point. There is uh, also... Uh, a rule that does not allow for two players to be negative in their score. So right. they cancel out the balls to get to where only one player is negative. Yeah, give us an example like, you know, I owe three, Mark owes two. Essentially, I just owe one. What a nice shot this is wow. here. I thought he wow. made it. Very heady shot. 
Yeah, and what he was doing is just trying to get Efren to, to have to shoot at something over by his pocket to maybe open up the cue ball a little bit. Now, you know, maybe Roberto can do something. You doubt Efren gives up a look at the five, though. So good at this level, straight draw right here, making the ball bend. See that? He's so good at that. And another one that he hit really well that, you know, many can say he's the best ever at is lagging. Pretty much froze it there against Roberto. <laughs> Rarely ever lost a lag. I mean, in his heyday, match after match after match, he won that lag at an awfully high rate. Don't really see much here, Mark. No, he loves competing, too. That's the other part of it. He, he loves the challenge, and he loves paying attention to the little nuances and additions to his own game from watching other players play. Yeah, I don't know about this. I thought he would shoot the eight into the five and swing the cue ball a couple rails up into this corner, doubling him up. I mean, yeah. this is a nice shot, but this is probably just going to keep you hemmed up over there behind the stack. I th I thought that he was going after the five ball with the cue ball there yeah, because, like because he sells out so much if he fails, to, even if he gets the cue ball pinned to the cushion, no good. Right. So he just hit it a little bit heavy, and effort forces you to play shots that are a little bit uncomfortable for you mm -hmm. just because you know how good he is and how creative he is. He takes the guy out of his game just a little bit. Now, Efren's offense, if there's anything suspect about his game in his uh, waning years here, it's going to be offensively. Well, and that's actually, and then ironically, that was actually his strength, right? Running so many balls oh, from yeah. different places. Yeah. <clears throat> Big shot on the 13. If he can bury the 13, he should be able to get to the rail and get an angle on the 11. So we'll see. Good stroke there. Yeah, he really, stayed still. Sometimes really that's what you see. Really confident, though, right? When you see one. him, that's when you see him moving, then you know he's not feeling right. Now he's going to be able to get the other side of the stack. Nah, he didn't get there. He was uh, trying to get on the eight. Disappointed about that. Well, the slick table is going to fall a little bit downward on that shot. And I played efforts a lot of hours. Um, back during the Camel Pro Beard Series and a lot of tournaments we'd be at. I played him a lot of one pocket, played him a little more serious later years, but and then a lot of tournament one pocket. But I've always found the I have my best results when I keep it super simple against him. Play real traditional kind of one pocket. Good chat there. Super good. Which Efren was always really good opposite handed, right? Did this ball get throwable, the one? I didn't think so. And here on the overhead it looks like quite a bit, but Okay, so this combo must go clean. Okay, he's not trying to take a chance. Did pretty well. Moved a couple balls over there by his pocket. Kind of hemmed the cue ball up. And if Roberto was going to try to reach over the seven ball to make the 14, it'd be one, it'd be super tough. I don't think he's able to do that. And that would be the only offensive shot. Efren's got four as well. He's got to try and kick probably to the rail. He's standing and just come one rail over trying to get somewhat behind the one. I mean, he could take a foul in there and make Efren really release the cue ball somewhere to open it up, right? Because Efren isn't going to want to go backwards even though he probably would. I don't know about this shot. Trying to bank the four over to his pocket. Yeah, that was always going to be very, very difficult. Looks like I, Efren got the 10, maybe, as a shot. And the one. Uh, oh, you can see the one, too. Well, then. Yeah. He's got all kinds of shots. Yeah, Roberto was trying to squeeze the cue ball up on the three and the seven at the same time. Now, we are playing object ball fouls don't count. Oh, yeah, he had the one for sure. Now he can get up on the two. Yeah, and then come across for what would be his out ball in game number one. And, you know, just opposite what have happened here also. The longer I could get into the game, the better I always felt playing Efren as well, or, or Roberto, any of those guys like that. Good spot. 
speed there and sent the three ball or the 12 ball. Yeah, that should have been conceded. Yeah. I guess maybe it can't be. Hereford with a, a, a smile there. Game number one goes to Efren Wallace. <clears throat> now, do we know these guys if they are they both undefeated? Do we have a clue on that? Uh, I think Ken said too. And, uh, the team not listening. It's round number five. We started with 457 players. 69 yeah. remain. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure what the status is. If they're, let's see. Sometimes they even have it up on. The yeah, they'll have it on the. You know the rotating screen. Yeah. With all the matches. But. <clears throat> Funny. Every year it seems like this is the pocket that most players break to on this table. Even the lefties. Really nice break, man. <clears throat> All right, pay attention here, folks, because this is something you can learn from, that's for sure, usually. Efren at the table getting out of the break and a nasty one at that, huh, Mark? No, yeah, this is... <laughs> It, there's nothing going to be easy about this at all. It's going to require moving multiple balls or taking fouls, being really creative. If he can come across the 15 and get past the side and get to the in rail and leave a combo on the 2 3, that would be, or 2 11, that would be great. I don't know if he can really get the cue ball enough towards the middle of the in rail to keep him on the combo. Right. Yeah, as soon as you hit the 15 thick enough to come across the table, now you're flattening out the cue ball quite right. a bit. All right, he's got to hold him in the sack, it looks like. Look at the nine come across. <laughs> Four got across, so even though he let him see the nine, still pretty nice. He cleared some alleys to kick behind the two here in a moment, that being Efren, because he's probably going to have to do that. Rivera looking to stop the cue ball along the long rail, maybe bank the nine back into the clutter. Yeah, and normally with the balls this close, you'll just go mildly into the ball, into the balls like that. Yeah. Now this is what I was talking about. Now Efren at least has a three rail kick to get behind the two. He has a, a one rail kick to get behind the two. A moment ago, there were some balls in the way over there on the side rail that was precluding those kick shots and. That first shot by Efren, he made a little bit of room. Could go off the four. Could bank the four towards his hole and go three rails behind the two. I know he loves that shot. Most do. Is he going to go right off the four behind the two without banking it? Uh, well, I that's thought he tougher, was, I thought. I thought he was looking at bringing the cue ball around three rails off the four. Yeah, three. that's what I would do. Okay. I think that's easier than trying to go directly off the four safe, believe it or not, Mark. More of an alley. Uh, didn't get much, so watch out for a kiss. Is this going to go around it? Oh, oh sweet. Golly. Nice shot. Great shot there. <laughs> Roberto even acknowledges he's smiling and laughing. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, to be honest with you, I'm surprised Roberto didn't see that shot he was going to leave uh, pushing the cue ball over there. Just, just kind of mildly banking the nine. Well, you know, you still have to execute it. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, but it's a, it's a, I mean, Efren's going to hit that mark at a high rate coming I, off that ball three rails. I so. understand. Yeah. yeah. You're just not going to play many guys that have the capacity to hit it as nimbly as yeah. Efren does because he's so good at billiards and understanding how the balls move. And, and through a series of shots now, Efren has managed to extricate himself from a place that looked like he might lose the game after that open break, yeah. uh, opening break. Yeah, he's got options here. He can come off the se the seven and get to the rail and get behind the two. I like crossing the 15 up to my side and dropping the cue ball behind the two myself. All right, he wants it to go a little bit. Wants it to go. He doesn't want to leave any possibility to get at the 15 or get behind the one and the eight and all that. It looks like mission accomplished. Yeah, Billy... Billy and Cardona, and I'm waiting to get the opportunity to shoot it to where it's right. He likes this two-rail kick if we can get the overhead. Yeah, he likes this two-rail kick in this spot where you come here, here, 
Catch the good side of the 15, send the 15, you know, kind of near the pack and the cue ball down the rail. You yeah. see that? Yeah, that's a nice shot. <laughs> yeah. He's and looking at that yeah, now. And he sees that what he thinks is that there's just a lot of room for error to hit that ball on that side. Yeah. You don't have to hit it. You know, you can hit it a few different ways, Mark. Right. Billy, Billy, a big proponent of that shot. 13 across, cue ball between all those balls. Keeping it mild. Think about Efren. When you're not getting a ball across really that's threatening, yeah. he can be a dangerous dude. <laughs> he can make something happen. Right. Well, just to get himself to this position in the game has uh, been a, a feat. I'd lo love to get behind the two desperately somehow, even if I had to kick. He's gotten a ball up table on his side, which is a huge advantage, that being the 15 ball, where Roberto really doesn't have that. Now sizing up maybe the two railer on the 15, but it would be mainly to control the cue ball. He wouldn't mind the 15 getting near his pocket. Yeah, he's going to put a little speed on this 15 if he can, though. He's going to try and ricochet a ball towards this hole if he can't get the 15 by the 7. Yeah, it was always going to go a little long. There you go. Okay, got this cue ball kind of oddly tucked on this four ball. Can he shoot the 13 into the top of the eight? Yeah. And, clear, and stun forward and clear both of those balls out. I don't think, I think the 13 will hit high of the six if he kind of stuns it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think he could clear some balls there and do a lot stunning the cue ball forward. It's touchy. I'm looking right at it. It is pretty touchy, so. The thing is, he's really cut him off as far as just kicking here, Mark. So this is super tough. He could go off the 13 off the bottom of the one, coasting the cue ball towards Efren's pocket, but he could scratch. He's looking at the shot I think I was talking about, but it's not easy. Yeah, that, I like that. And you see where the two balls are going, Mark, up on his side, up table? Yeah. That really keeps Ephraim from going up in the corner here, maybe momentarily. Ephraim's not taking much time, though. He could elevate on the four. He's had a little trouble with that shoulder when he elevates the cue. You'll see him kind of move it around in a stretching manner. One of our great friends, Chuck Claire, texted in that uh, Efren has one loss and Roberto has none. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Got quite a bit of one pocket here today. Won't finish today. It's tomorrow, right? I believe it's scheduled. All right. Okay, again, you got to be careful when you're bringing that cue ball over. Give Efren a chance, you know, if it stops a hair short to bank the one long rail and stun between the 10-9 with the cue ball and take a chance at making that 1-6, it's not bad. Now, I think the cue ball is a little flat. And this is kind of a predicament because the cue ball is down so low, but he would love to maybe shoot the 9 and have the cue ball wedge in behind the 2, but it's a tough shot from here. I think it's, he can do it. Per, yeah, he's so good at it. I mean, he's just. Oh, yeah. man. Keeps the two Powerful. ball. Powerful. Yeah, keeps the two ball congested at the same time. <laughs> and completely, uh, you know, defends the six ball over there. He wants to keep that six there until Roberto may be forced to kick at it now. But it's, it's not even a natural angle. He's going to have to do a little something with it if he kicks at it. Yeah, he's got a. Add a little English one way or another. If he goes between the 4-9, he puts a little kill. If he goes between the 4-8, he puts a little, little left English on the cue ball. I don't like that too much myself. A lot of times you want to kick at the 6 when it's off the rail a little bit. You can get in behind it, double kiss it away. You can do a lot of good things. I think
think now he's looking at kicking for just a, a safety. Or just Down a, to the bottom take a foul. Just take a foul even to get it there. Right. Not sure what he's looking at over here because he's never shooting that direction. Yeah, that's a last resort kind of thing. Okay, he's, he's taking a foul. Kicking two rails to the bottom of the one, something like that. Yeah. Don't hit the point. Okay. Or the one. Wow, everyone's going to cut at this. Now, this is that shot. It's it's hard to introduce right English to check up the cue ball here because you're bridging over. Yeah. And, you, you know, while it's object ball fouls don't count, if you, in the act of stroking, hit that 12 ball and then the cue ball comes back and hits it, then it is a foul. Oh, he was able to get it. Oh. Uh, he got he's behind the ball. Kind of he's going to shoot this combo, though. That's why it was so key to keep the 211, you know, kind of jumbled up whenever, yeah. he, whenever he went behind him a second ago. Very aware of what's going on. And if he can come into the 15, the 14 will go. If he can shoot the 10 5, he's got to shoot the 10 5, I think. I mean, there's just no ifs, ands, but unless he can shoot the one right now. The 10 5's too, too free in it, free ish, mm -hmm. you know. Like. This is a, a circumstance here where you, you just want to lightly get to the 15. You don't want to dislodge No, it you don't want to crush it. Yeah. Well, you want to use the uh, 14 ball, too. It's well, yeah. Protector ball. Yeah, and really the 211 covers up all those banks. Yeah, yeah like that. So that was mainly playing the cue ball on the 15 more than the combination that set a pretty off angle, and he would have had to go much thinner, which would have minimized his exposure to putting the 14 in play. Yeah, the problem is he really wanted to catch the point with that ball. When you don't get one near your pocket, easy for your opponent to get you down there, but buried behind the five. and. Right. And things start to become a little hairy. Right off the seven here will be the yeah. shot. And what this really looks like. Let's see here. With Efren with the small lead. As it looks like probably because Efren doesn't have much on his side. These are all going up table. Yeah, right now the ball definitely favor Roberto. Yeah, big time. Can he do something, you know, with a little bit of velocity, like banking the 10 at the 14 and then try to chip the cue ball down on the long rail here? Maybe. the 7, something like that. I mean, it is doable. The thing is, when you bank that ball back, right, and you go to the end rail and back over by the 7 is what you're talking about. Yes. Easy to get a kiss, so watch out. Nice shot. Now, that's that type of shot right there. Because you don't have anything near your pocket, you have to mm -hmm. be really good to keep the speed of the 10 or something on your side because now you got free shots for Roberto. And the other part about it is when Efren shoots that type of shot, that tells me he doesn't want to send all the balls up table. He's trying to keep the, the game aggressive. Oh, it hit the point and straightened out. You don't see that very often. We'll try and get a, a look at it hopefully here in a moment. But. Roberto's got a, a couple of nice shots. I think he can shoot at the 14. He can roll the nine. I think. I'll tell you, if there's a, a element of Roberto's game, sometimes his body language, sometimes he doesn't stay down and get through the ball. If he's feeling a little iffy about the shot, that naturally happens to everybody, but especially with him. Pretty smooth. Yeah, and it's, you know, a little bit, I wouldn't say unique delivery, but a little, definitely his own a little bit in a sense. And uh, seems like he, like every, every, all of us, you know, when we're off a little bit, a little bit of things that happen, like when he's in stroke, right, his head comes up slowly as he's making that final delivery, right? Roberto's yeah. does, right? So, but when he's off, it comes up a little quicker. Not, you know, it's yeah. not quite as good. Just like, you know, me, my flaw, my flaws coming across the line with the cue stick a little bit when I'm 
to the left whenever you know I get a little quick, I tend to do it here more. Boy, Efren made a good shot to wedge that cue ball up on the two ball when he was foul <clears throat> conceding a ball. <coughs> and still Roberto should like this, banking mm -hmm. the eight down. Plus it's gonna loosen up the two. Yeah, I don't know if I'd do this. Efren may get him to where he can't see the two for or the eight for a moment. Yeah, he can really squeeze the cue ball now. I would have had to turn the cue ball loose that time if I was Roberto and banking the eight down. Now he may not get the cue ball turned loose for a moment or two. He had a look at the eight a moment ago. That's what I want to do. I want to ticky the ball with Efren. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let him Couldn't think anything worse. Here in about five minutes, the two and 11 will be right next to Efren's pocket. <laughs> yeah, 37 shots later. Yeah. All right. Now he's got to kick away. He's got to avoid the seven. All right. He's taking the foul? Yeah. Okay. Well, he could have gotten over there earlier off the eight, but elected to, to wait and... <clears throat> we'll see what Efren wants to do. Is he chopping the five over? Got to be real careful there. If you give up a cross on the one, uh, you'll be in trouble. A bank on the four maybe also. See, the thing about the seven, Mark, is, you know, if you feel really good to lay the cue ball down on the rail, kind of mm -hmm. stunning forward, that's one thing. But otherwise, there's nothing. it's hard to get something... Yeah. You know, directing right at the hole with the 14, 1, and 5, the way they lay. And the speed to trickle that cue ball up to the long rail is such that the 7 ball is going to have a lot of velocity. Yeah. So it doesn't hang out. If it doesn't clip something, it's slow way down. Well, the good thing is you can bet it's hitting something. <laughs> you know, that's the good thing with the 14, 1, and 5. The, it, he may even bank it short into, like, the 4, 3 even, which isn't terrible, but... Okay, looks like he's trying to get through this nine to the two ball. Oh, no. Okay, he's trying to ease this over. It's the one thing that's, that's not talked about with Efren sometimes is that depth touch, and we're going to have a really early timeout here. Okay, we'll be right back after a short player intermission. Okay, everybody, we're back. Efren's not here, and Ken Schumann's not here, but anyway, Roberto's here. Ken's coming in the arena now, and he could drop off the 10 over behind the 5 with the cue ball. The thing is, right, you got to be real careful because Efren's going to try and get him to, with the ball starting to get open now a little on Efren's side, he's going to try and get him on the back of the 211, you know, whichever kind of way it takes. Mm -hmm. A kick shot, anything really, so. Challenging him on the eight is tough, but meaning banking the eight and leaving him over there is what he's looking at. Here comes Easy E, easy e Efren Reyes. Okay, well, Roberto has studied here. Decided what he wants to do. I must feel like he can get the 15 onto the 7 is the only reason I could see him shooting the 15. It's the only thing I can imagine is if he feels like he can get this by the 13 onto the 7. Yeah, beauty. Really nice shot there. Great speed on the cue ball. Now the thing is, is the 10 thin enough to cut and go to the rail to the back of the 10, the 2 and the 11. Really effort made his... His money with hit this kind of shot, playing one pocket in his heyday. And you know, this particular shot is all like 90% cue ball, if you were to play that yeah, 10. Yeah, it it's looks it. like he can play it to me. But I'm you know sorry. what I'm saying? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah, forget yeah, yeah. Trying to make the 10. Yeah, just but to, that's the thing. He would make it more often than others and still play the cue ball. That's kind of exactly right, what I meant. Right, I'm just saying that's your focus. That's why it all takes right. some of the pressure off that Coming shot. off, oh, he's got to hit it. You want to get on down there. Want to get on down there? Oh, pretty darn good. <laughs> he got on down there, Jerry. He sure did. <laughs> looks looks short all the way until it just filtered right in there where he needed to be. Yeah, did he cut him off the 10 ball here? That would be too cold. 
And that's what he was trying to do, of course. But, oh, no, he's having to kick, so he did cut him off for sure. Now Efren gets the pleasure of the eight ball maybe bank here in a moment. And this is where Roberto should be aware of kicking a little bit better, not leaving as much angle on the eight and not leaving it as shootable, Mark. Okay, he put a lot of spin, which is, ooh, he got into the eight. So kind of like we saw on the rotation a little bit, Roberto maybe not in form as well because that's two kick shots that were off by mm -hmm. a decent little measurements, you know, decent little bits. So mm -hmm. Efren might get on the seven here. Yeah, if he gets on the seven or even if he collides heavy on the seven. He's like trying this, to he there. should get the five from here. Yeah, and the 10 and 9 both go. So this is where you can be aggressive coming up table. A lot of times when you got one ball, it's a little scary. Because yeah. you can get straightish and not be able to get on another ball. But when you got two, be aggressive. Go ahead and get up on that nine. You're going to have a good angle one way or another. Oh, perfect, actually. So now he has the choice to leave the 10. Use the nine to drop down on the seven, the one, and the 15. So anytime you got two balls, Mark, don't don't be bashful going on there to yeah. get position, you know. Because you're going to use one of them to use the other to get on these balls, or you're going to have a natural to get on these balls right from the get like he does here. And notice how smart he is leaving the seven behind. Knows he can use the, the 15 to get on the 7. And then he can come up and bump the 14 maybe to open up that other strike. Maybe get on the 10 after that. I don't know if he got a, too much angle to draw behind the 7 here. Well, he's so, he's so close. Yeah. He should be able to do it. Now, the thing is, Efren doesn't want to take a chance of getting him. So I'm just thinking it's he thinner. Might he might, he come might to play the one 10. rail. He might, well, or he might yeah, play. Him. <laughs> yeah. He might play one rail and still cut it in the seven, but just bring the cue ball over here by the second diamond on the long rail type of thing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Rather than try to draw. Well, he, and he might pinch. spin it one rail above the seven right, like, like that. This. Yeah. Yep. And now he can still come into the 14 if he wants. He's playing for two, so he might not want to. Well, he yeah. can go in. Anyway. Seven's pretty thin, so he yeah. may just want to level out here. If he does level out and go into the 14, watch out for the side pocket where he's standing. <laughs> Randall at home got game ball before him with a three. Now the 13 and four are all wedged up, so he's going to be pretty comfortable playing this ball. Good speed. <laughs> Good job, Ephraim Two games to nothing for the early games. Just a race to three. Incredible speed control again on that safety where he wedged him in there. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing that he really was his bread and butter uh, in one pocket also is getting you behind the ball by your hole. You know, he could do it 18 million different ways, it seemed like, no matter what you cut off or what you eliminated. If he got a couple of them over there, he was going to be able to get you behind them. You can see Efren's breaking more off the rail out here in the middle of the table, and that's to preclude the corner ball from leaking out in front of Gomez's pocket. And you don't get the kiss on the scratch near as often either when you bring the cue ball out a little bit. Gets a little more bounce off of there and kind of goes down the side of the rack. Another touchy one. He's, all right, well, he's moving these balls, putting them on the stack, so he's got to hope he doesn't nothing come across. Yeah, this could be bad. So that shot there, right, Mark? Yeah. You want to get something near your side, but really if you put something on your side there, that's the ball that Efren's going to get you in trouble with. So when you shoot that, you're trying to clear him from his side, but remember, they're just going like a diamond over maybe. Mm -hmm. a, you know, they're not really mm – -hmm. If you bang something and get it near your hole, he's going to cross that over and really put the, the business on you, right? So, what's he doing? Stack again? Oh, look at this. Oh. Guy. And holding for the seven. <laughs> wow. A la Efren Reyes. <laughs> wow. Okay, very creative <clears throat> shot there. A back cut, kiss carom. But he knows all that side spin, right? Right. He's going to make it like kind of kick off of that ball and easily hold the angle to go in. So, 
mean, you just always learn something from this guy, I'll tell you that. I don't know if he's gotten any future here. Is this ball, can he get at the four some kind of way through all them balls? I think well, so. And I'll tell you another thing, that the 411 goes right towards Gomez's pocket too, which yeah. you're going to have to be mindful of that. Yeah, you don't want to get in a predicament where you can't defend against that, right? Right. It's hard to tell from our vantage point what will and won't work, but I will default towards Efren's judgment on this. Whatever he chooses will be the right shot. If he had a hair more angle, he'd go topspin to the end rail and then open up the 13-2 and all that. Yeah. With like a hook shot, kind of like with a straight top. Pretty flat here. Yeah, this is pretty flat. He still may try and get into it a little bit. But Maybe he can get up for the nine. He can. He can for sure. He's trying to see what else he can do trapping-wise, though, I think. Maybe the and 11 he, goes. I don't know. He played position like it does. Yeah. Huh. Well, if it does, if he can hold for the four somehow, he's going to knock the two out. Oh, he could hold, knock the four away. Oh. Okay. So getting maximum balls here from kind of nowhere. He's going to get to where he needs one with the, the, you know, the nine and two here. He's coming around off of it. And one thing that I've noticed when Efren was struggling or what you might say struggling, maybe not in form just because, of course, his age and whatnot, but this was his speed control. And it seems like his speed control has been real well, real, real, uh, real good today. Yeah. You know, you never know either, too, as you age a little bit. Maybe the first match in the morning is actually your better peak energy time type of thing. Or you get that feeling where maybe as the day wears on, you get a little bit more dull. Uh, a little thick there, so. Oh, and it hung. Yeah, well, that's kind of important because Efren, because Roberto's going to follow this ball in here and keep him off of the one Getting hole. On the hill, yeah. yeah. And it can be a little touchy shooting from behind the head string with the entire pack solid because you're the one that's got to open them, right, if you're Efren. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you got to be able to manage how you're going to open the balls. Now he's looking to see if there's anything playable for Efren before he follows this ball in. Well, it's been all Efren Reyes, but don't feel bad, Roberto. That's happened about a million times. <laughs> don't think that's going to squeeze in there usually. It's not going to get in there. Pretty easy to tell once you toy it around with it a bit. Now, Efren push on the ball is really trying to hold the cue ball up, maybe. The thing about that is you may not get a rail with the, with the object ball. Well, sometimes here, Mark, your safest shot is to run the cue ball, like cut the one mm -hmm. and run the cue ball. That coin's on the wrong side there. Yeah, there you go, Roberto. Move that one over. Um, you know, you don't want to lay behind the pack because you're opening balls that yeah. you don't know exactly how they're going to turn out exactly because you're shooting from some distance and you're moving many of them, right? And you don't want to leave a cross corner. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So your best defense is distance. Even though mm -hmm. you know you're doing a, you're playing a little bit aggressive at the same time. Oh, this is going to hurt unless he gets that cue ball way down there. And I'll tell you, the speed again is excellent, but I guarantee you, Efren didn't think the 15 was going to come out. You know, he's not going to let him shoot this 15 with a six nothing lead. Mm -mm. No, here's the thing, Roberto is a tough shot, but. He's is supposed he, to shoot it. Is he ever going to get another turn yeah. to possibly capture the game? And he can really do some serious damage if he connects on this 15. Yeah, because I don't know in the last year, year and a half, I don't know if there's anybody that's stolen more games in the tournament one pocket than this guy right here. Yeah. And he's done it to win tournaments. Well, and even though there's all those threats out there, when you look at the score line, you need nine balls. Yeah. Are you ever getting, you know, do you want to mouse better around? Shot. Yeah. yeah. So you just have to take your medicine from here because it's, it, looks it like, yeah. almost makes you feel good about it. it looks like to me he's got to roll it, too. He's, he's not, not even shooting. playing that. Huh. Well, the thing is, Efren doesn't want the balls to go up table, I don't think, like I said earlier. But with a 6 nothing lead, with a 2 nothing lead in games, he doesn't mind it one bit. 
So he may shave this ball, bring him back on the stack if he can see the 15. If he can't, he's got to be a little bit concerned the way he moves these balls. I may just rub the two for one moment. Looks like he's trying to get at the 15. Oh, is this going to come a little high? No, get pretty good. Protected the eight. I think got Roberto over the stack. So we're going to have to do something with the five ball here at the end of the day, I think. He's looking at the kiss shot on the one as possible with the 12. Now, one thing Roberto does, and the reason why he steals those games, just hangs around real well, does little things here and there, even with the score line not so nice. Now, this is funny. He's going to shoot at this, which is no shape ever. And, if you know, you're not selling out, but you could easily give up a trap shot. Hey, looky here. Get yeah. up on the eight. Oh, yeah, he's got a little bit of a bank, doesn't he? Oh, he left a cut as well. So good thing that went in. Efren could cut that in. Got it to stiffen pretty nice, all things considered. Now Efren's in a little bit of a spot. Can he come off the two and make the eight? Well, and bank can, the two up? I think I, he I, can. I feel confident that he can <laughs> hit the eight out with the two. and But the problem is that two goes pretty high velocity into the stack. Yeah, not as bad as you think. You know, the two's going to come up mildly. But, I mean, unless you think you're going to really lose the cue ball, which the eight's up a little bit. Right. You know, you might cut the eight in and the cue ball come up a diamond or so. So... This is tough. He was thinking about cross corner in the five. What he was thinking about. I don't know if he gets this to the hole. Well, if he gets get it close. Oh, he hit it decent. He hit it better than decent. <laughs> and he's going to get Look a bump on the 11. <laughs> Look at his speed. Down and here. the bump on the 11 or 15, whichever it is. And this is to win the game, I believe. Yeah, and match, the match ball. Roberto, he's just going to have a big darn it after this. There wasn't much he could do, Mark. Oh, no, he's handcuffed throughout the match. Yeah. You know, really, uh, from getting out of Roberto's break that time, where he had really laid in there in that series of shots. That was yeah. kind of the, the distinguishing mark. At all, you know, all facets, he kept control of that match, and if he keeps doing that, we're going to see a lot more effort Reyes. Well, this has been an AccuStats presentation. Thank you for joining us today. That's our time for this time. So long for just a while.